Yo, what's going on everybody? It's your boy the Banana Rama here and today we are bringing you a season 8 support guide. A lot of people have been asking me since the start of season 8, you know, what do I build? How do I start? Where do I go? What this this this. Let's all take a deep breath. I'm going to get you through this. Now with season 8 came a lot of starter items and a lot of new changes in the meta. A lot of people were asking, what's the right starter item for support? You know, if you're Sylvanas, it might be mannequins. Well, <laughs> all jokes aside, we'll talk about that at another video. Um, but for mo for most supports right now, honestly, even Sylvanas, you're probably going to run Sentinel's Gift. Um, War Flag and Benevolence are fun. They're fun items to play around with, but they're just not effective for their cost of gold. Uh, Sentinel's Gift offers you for 500 gold, you get 14 prods total, 7 magical and physical. You get 75 health, you get MP5 and HP5. It may be one of the best starter items in the game, in my opinion. Um, War Flag and Benevolence just don't have the survivability, in my opinion, to be efficient in lane. They don't leave you with enough. Um, so Sentinel's Gift, I think, is easily the clear and favorite choice. As far as Relics go, I think you're mostly going to be starting with Shell. Shell's pretty much the go-to one for early boxing, especially in dual lane. Uh, now after Sentinel's Gift, you're going to be going into Tier 1 Gauntlet of Thieves, and I know Gauntlet of Thieves is a very controversial item. A lot of people aren't fans of the Gauntlet of Thieves rush. I am. I'm one of them. But with this start, you still have enough gold left over to buy 4 health pots and 4 multi pots, which gives you plenty of sustain in lane to last long enough to get that gold to get Gauntlet of Thieves rush. And with the ability to have... Uh, the speed buff out of base, I think uh, the boots, I don't think boots are a necessary rush anymore. I mean, they can be a power spike, but I don't think it's necessary. Also, to just clarify, also, the the Tier 1 Gauntlet of Thebes Rush is not just for to get it started. It, this item early on, with paired with Sentinel's Gift, gives you 7 of each prop magical physical, 175 health, which is a boatload of health early on. You get a boatload of HP 5, and you still get that little bit of MP 5 from Sentinel's Gift. This start, to me, just cannot be beat, in my opinion, as a support. And it, it's just so survive. It just gives you so much survivability. It will be hard to effectively kill you early on in any gank. Now, the next big question is, what item rush are you going first thing? For me... I'm going Gauntlet of the Thieves. I feel like Gauntlet of the Thieves is an effective first item rush. Especially now in this meta where we're able to have the movement speed buff out of base. I don't feel boots are necessarily as important as they once were. I also feel like you're not ganking as much as a support. You're not rotating as much pre-level 5. You're pretty much sticking to lane. And with this build and the sustain that you have with the pods, the Watcher's Gift, the uh, and the tankiness you have with these items combined... I feel like you're able to survive long enough to get that Gauntlet of Thieves rush going real quick and real fast. That way you're ready for the mid-game team fights. You should have it fully stacked around. I was getting it done in most of my games around 11 minutes, 12 minutes or so. So I feel like it's effective enough to pull it off. Now the next big question you should be asking yourself as a support player in Season 8 of Smite is, what shoes do you go? You have really one of two options. Option number one, as you can see on the screen, is reinforce shoes. They provide plus 20 magical power, 150 health, plus 20% crowd control reduction, and the standard 18% movement speed. Passive is every time you're damaged by an enemy god, you gain a stack that provides 3 physical and magical protections. It stacks up to 7 times and lasts 6 seconds. You can get a total of 21 protections out of these boots. I find these boots to be most effective when you're facing damage over time. Abilities, for example, gods like Sylvanas, Anubis, Poseidon, anything that can really effectively stack these boots. Now the second option is, let's say they have no damage over time abilities, you can't effectively stack the reinforced shoes over and over. Uh, another solid option is Traveler shoes. They give 25 magical power, 15 MP5, and plus 22% movement speed. That's 4% higher than the typical boots when it comes to movement speed, when the typical boot gives 18%. Uh, I highly recommend this if they don't have dots. Uh, you want to be rotating faster. I get it that plus four movement speed may sound silly, uh, but it really can make all the difference, especially if you're a Ymir who's facing a more mobile guardian like Athena who can just alt away to any lane. You want to be able to try to get over there as fast as you can, and I think these will be a solid option in Season 8. 
You got your Thebes and you got your shoes. So where do we go from here? For me, there's four items you can go after Thebes and shoes, really. Let's say, for example, they have three physical, two magical, which is a standard team comp you'll be facing in Smite most of your games. You'll typically want to go to the Sovereignty route. It helps boost your team early on with physical protections and in late game team fights. It'll make your whole team tankier against the majority of their team. But say you're facing three magical and two physical, you can replace Sovereignty with Heart Ward Amulet. It does the opposite where it boosts your team with magical protections instead of physical. These items really syner synergize well with Thieves and its passive. It just makes your team tankier as a whole and it allows you to do your job. As I said though, there are four options and the other two are right here. One is Contagion, and one is Pestilence. They provide the same passive. Enemy gods within 55 units have their healing reduced by 20%. These do not stack with each other. Buying both of these will not, I repeat, will not give you 40% anti-heal on the area. These items are effective when they're against healers like Aphrodite, Sylvanas, I mean really anything with healing. Or, for example, Anubis, who loves to go into lifesteal, can sustain for a good while. You want to buy these to reduce that effectiveness that they have. It makes them easier to kill. It doesn't allow them to sustain as well. These are key in these matchups. Now, as our role says, we are the support. Our job is to support the team. We keep the engine going. And this next item really helps with that. Relic Dagger gives you 350 health, 10% cooldown reduction, 10% crowd control reduction, 7% movement speed, and the passive is your relics receive 40 second cooldown reduction. This is going to make sure you can med more, you can shell more, you can blink more. This is going to allow you to do things for your team to help put them in the position to get the kills or to keep them alive. I cannot stress how important this item is. Always run it. Now while we're on Relic Dagger, let's talk about your second relic because you're probably hitting mid-game at this point or before this point maybe. Uh, Shell's always going to be starter relic, I feel, no matter who you're playing at support, in my opinion. I like Shell for the early boxing potential. In uh, duo lane, it's good for fighting early. Uh, as for the second relic, though, uh, it just comes down to who you're playing as. Ares will always go blink, no matter what. That's a guarantee. But it just comes down to what the other enemy team is running and getting your relics around that to counter. Okay, so your final few items here are going to be relatively important. Spirit Robe is going to be what you go mostly, but there's going to be situations where Spirit Robe won't be as beneficial as, say, a Spectral Armor, like if they have a Crit Hunter or Hunter Building Crit. You want to try to negate some of that Critical Strike damage. This will really come in handy. Or maybe they have a Hunter who just built Attack Speed and no Crit, and then they have a Kali in Jungle or a Bakasura who just went a bunch of Attack Speed. Then you can go uh, Witchblade to try and you know reduce their effects when they dive the back line with that attack speed debuff or maybe you just want to deal more damage and help your mid laner deal more damage by taking away uh, percent protections from the enemies when it comes to magical defense or you could go talisman of energy to buff your teammates when they kill minions getting a kill or an assist with talisman of energy equipped gives allies within 70 units a stack of energy the energy stacks provide 2% movement speed, 2% attack speed, and 10 MP5. They last 10 seconds, and they can stack up to 6 times. Now, if you were to buy one of the alternatives below over Spirit Robe, just sell your boots and get Spirit Robe over uh, boots. And then, last but not least, comes your upgrading your Sentinel's Gift. You upgrade it to Sentinel's Embrace. Sentinel's Embrace gives you 20 physical and magical prots, 200 health, and 20 MP5. The passive is very good. It evenly splits 120 physical and magical protections amongst all nearby ally gods and yourself. If you're alone, you gain 60 physical and magical protections. Most of the time, though, this is going to be late stage team fighting. It's going to make your team beef here. It's going to make everybody harder to kill. And it's just going to, it's just overall the best way to go with Sentinel's Gift. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that will be it for the Season 8 support guide for now. We will see what Season 8 brings us, what nerfs, what buffs we will see to support items, what the builds will change, all that jazz. But for now, this will be it. Please, if you did like the content, do not hesitate by giving it a like. Maybe giving me a subscribe. It's free, and you can always unsubscribe if you change your mind. That's going to be it. It's your boy, the Banana Rana, signing out. Take care, everyone.